Thanks, Michael. Number one fan. <clears throat> A couple of weeks ago, I brought uh, the encouragement from the young adults class regarding the necessity of young Christians attending the assembly and how important it was for them to do so to grow spiritually and also how important it was for the church to grow by having <coughs> young Christians participating in, in all the activities. Um, as our spiritual growth comes from the word of God, it is critical for all of us to be actively engaged in the things that God has provided for us to increase our knowledge of him and his will for us. This includes God showing us where we need to grow by testing us and allowing us to see the results of the test. <clears throat> I've had some of those opportunities recently during my home renovation when it wasn't going exactly the way that I hoped. And I started realizing, hey, I still got some deficiencies because I was getting wound up like an eight-day clock. But a stupid miter box was not cutting it straight. I was doing everything right. Why was it coming out bad? Well, challenges. Challenges in this life. And that's why God has these things come our way, so we can see where we need some growth. Should I be getting upset about a stupid miter box and some crown molding? Uh, that was made by Menards and not me, and that it didn't cut straight? That the thing didn't come with any instructions? No, I shouldn't be getting upset about that. It's a worldly issue. I should just, that shouldn't affect me. But because it did, it was like ding, 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 ding. Yo, John, you got a problem, man. You need to work on this. Well, what was it I was supposed to be getting out of that? I think Brian picked on it, <coughs> pointed it out pretty clearly. Is my personal pride. Hey, I'm pretty meticulous when I'm doing something. When it don't come out the way it's supposed to, after I did everything I was supposed to do, personal pride. Putty. Huh? Putty. 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 Yeah. Putty. Yeah. Fill it in with putty. Exactly. <laughs> Blaine has a saying about uh, filler and putty and paint fixes everything, makes uh, a workman perfect or something. Experience. I'm sorry, what? There you go. There's another one of them cool sayings, you know? So <clears throat> we get tested in a variety of ways, and these things come along, and it's for our good. Well, I could continue getting mad at that miter box. I have a solution. I'm going to borrow a chop saw from Brian. No more miter box. I'll solve that issue. I haven't, I haven't borrowed it yet. It's on my list. But if I cut my thumb off, maybe not. Who knows? Most of our testings in this life come with preparation and then a reward. Even looking for a job, we send out resumes. You prepare for the interview. You sweat bullets wondering if you did well. And eventually, if the Lord wants you to work there, the door will open and you'll get to go in. How many of you have had an opportunity to send out a resume for a job opening, and it was like they copied your resume to put it in the job posting. And you're thinking, this is me. This is me. This is a snap. And then you never, never hear from them. You're thinking, how can that be? I have everything that you want plus more. I not even get a call. Are you kidding me? Yeah. But you need to do the prep work, you need to send the resume, you need to send the thank you letter after the interview, you need to do a lot of things to work towards it, so preparation. But there's a result at the end of it which hopefully works in your favor. <clears throat> now without some sort of encouragement, I believe it's easy to slip into a lethargic type of Christianity. You may think that, hey, there's no progress in my walk. We, we're the same we were six months ago or a year ago. We don't know any more scriptures than we knew three months ago. As a matter of fact, some of those that we used to know have kind of faded away because we haven't had a chance to use them. 
Thank you. Thank you. Not the only one in the room that that's happened to. <clears throat> no one is asking us of the hope that's within us, and it just seems like we're fighting the same internal battles we fought a year ago. Bummer drag. Bummer drag. In speaking of wisdom and growth in the knowledge of the Lord, the psalmist says in Psalms 2, verse 4, If you seek her as silver and search for her as a hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. How exactly do we have to search? Do we just read the scriptures over and over and over again? Or do we have to stop and look at those words and those phrases and really discern what they're talking about? And if we can't make any sense of it, then we need to look again and maybe ask somebody to help us with what they mean. But why are we here this morning besides to partake of the Lord's table? To hopefully to be strengthened and encouraged in our inner man to grow from those who need milk of the word to go on to those who can feed on the meat of the word. To a mature Christian who can and who will correctly share the gospel with others and remain faithful until the end. But just like the old song says, it don't come easy. It don't come easy. If you seek her as silver. Anybody ever gone hunting for silver? Pan for gold? Okay. And search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and the knowledge of God. <clears throat> we must all have a sense of urgency. A big part of this is for us to take it personally. Maybe a better way to express it would be to say, Souls are being lost every day. What are we doing about it? Have we missed an opportunity? When you look in the newspaper and all of a sudden you see an old high school buddy's picture in the paper and they're gone. And you're wondering, oh, I was wondering what happened to him. Well, now you don't have to wonder no more. You know exactly where they are. Luke 11, 23 says, He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. And when you ponder that particular verse, that can be sort of a, a toe-stepper. Toe-stepping like when somebody steps on your toes. Ouch. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I hadn't thought about it that way. He who does not gather with me scatters. Well, I didn't do anything wrong. Well, you didn't do anything right either. That's another way of looking at it. John 4, Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are white, already white for the harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. Notice two things. There are reapers and there are sowers. Both are working in the fields. And I know there's various ways of sowing. I know our individual light shining in the darkness is a way of sowing, but our light shine because of our good works, which people can see. Again, it is a matter of doing something, not just sitting and waiting. Doing something like Brian's stewardship, pressing forward, leaning into the battle. Not just waiting to get smacked, but moving forward. <clears throat> Anything worthwhile comes from diligence and effort. A college degree, a promotion at work. This is not something I'm experienced with. Planting a garden. Although I remember hoeing corn endlessly in the summertime. And pulling weeds out of the potatoes. Yeah, I remember all that. But it comes through a lot of work in the hot sun. But the reward comes when the harvest comes in. And then, I mean, sweet corn. So sweet, I mean, it's like, okay, the water's boiling on the stove. Ready, set, go. Race out to the garden as fast as you can. Grab a couple of your 
chuck it as fast as you can, throw it in the pot. It don't get no sweeter than that, right? So that was a reward for all that endless hoeing of the weeds out there. <clears throat> it takes diligence and effort. So how about obtaining Christian maturity? It will not come through patiently sitting through countless, endless, boring sermons. This is a real challenge. To go from needing the milk of the word to becoming a mature Christian. Psalms 111.10 The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. Those who do his commandments begin building a relationship with God, and this relationship is a two-way street. It's a very personal relationship. John chapter 1, <clears throat> picking up in about <clears throat> verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Children of the Most High God, not a distant third cousin, but a member of God's immediate family. A relationship of daily care and concern. This is also a two-way street. Not only does God have a daily care and concern for us, but, you ready? We also need to have a daily care and concern for the things that God needs from us. Yep, imagine that. God Most High needs something from us. Well, what would that be? Well, how about having the same care and concern for the souls of men that he does? That's what he's mostly concerned about. <clears throat> when we were children, or when our children are small, our expectations are not very high for them. But as time goes on, you give them responsibilities, and you expect them to do them. When, you're, when they become teens, you're wondering if they will ever be able to survive on their own. And by the time they get to young adults, you're wondering, did they hear anything we said? You've been giving them the same message for years, and now it's the 11th hour. Can they see? I recall seeing a bumper sticker years ago. It said something about teens, flee the house while you still know everything. <laughs> I thought that was very appropriate. And then they get out in, in the real world. The old Dustinator was talking to me this morning about these 20-hour days he's putting it at work. <laughs> the thought crossed my mind, and I said to him, so you are in a hurry to get out of college for what? <laughs> well, now you're there. This is real life. A lot of hours that you're putting in. <clears throat> Consider what God would have you do tomorrow and look with spiritual eyes for the opportunities he may be providing. And when we aren't paying attention, what happens? Chapter 12 out of Hebrews, a couple of verses here, Hebrews 12. <clears throat> Picking up in about verse 6. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness." He promises that he whom he loves will be chastened, that we may become partakers of his holiness. And if we aren't chastened, how can we grow into maturity? Can we expect that if we let you know, these little kids running around? Sophie. 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 
not interested. <clears throat> if we expect we just let them run around, do whatever they want until they're 18, that they're just automatically going to turn into good citizens? No, they need correction and instruction. And young Christians need exactly the same thing. God won't be far off, nor is he going to be chucking lightning bolts down from heaven when we need chastening. We are to have fellowship with God, and our chastening is going to come in small ways, like miter boxes. I don't know if you have a miter box at home, but if you do, just get rid of it. <laughs> just get rid of it and save some, some grief. 1 John chapter 1. <clears throat> Picking up in about verse 3. <clears throat> that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. This is a message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. A personal daily walk with the father and his son, Jesus. We're not to remain as children, but we are to grow in the knowledge of the father and the son ever learning and never stopping and overcoming the things that challenge us in this life. You cannot become a mature Christian without the knowledge of God or his son. John 8, 31, 32, Then Jesus said to the Jews which believed on him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The apostle Peter encourages and encourages us in 1 Peter 2, 2 through 3, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. And Paul writing unto Timothy encourages him in 2 Timothy 2, 15, be diligent to present yourself to prove to God a worker who is not who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Also turn to 2 Peter chapter 3. It's back like one page from 1 John. <clears throat> Second Peter 3, picking up in about verse 14. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless, and consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you, as also... In all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Growing in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ is a mandatory requirement of becoming a mature Christian. And I'm going to have to pick up the pace a little bit if we're ever going to get to this potluck. Second part is service to God. Service to God is another part of becoming a mature Christian. Service to God is not just a New Testament concept, but it's an Old Testament idea. In Deuteronomy 10, Picking up in about verse 12, it says, And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for your good? What does that mean, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and soul? Do you know anybody, or do, your, or do you yourself... <coughs> serve your job with all your heart and with all your soul. Do you know anyone who does so? That the job comes before friends and family? Or maybe you had a special project to work on and the boss said, okay, uh, unlimited overtime until the job is done. So you call the wife and say, honey, I'm not going to be home for dinner because you're going to keep working. That's part of the idea of giving it your heart and soul. 
when Linda and I first uh, were getting married, now she was a single mother with two kids and doing a pretty good job on her own. One of the reasons why I picked her, because I wanted her to be, my wife to be pretty self-sustaining, not to be you know, freaking out when the washing machine breaks or there's some sort of issue at the house. I needed her to be able to stand alone because I get deployed. But I wanted to make sure that she understood what this was, this marriage commitment was going to be. I said, look, I've been in the Marine Corps for 12 years. I've got eight more till I can retire. This is my career. It comes first. You come second. Yeah. I said, simple. You don't have to accept it. We won't get married. No problem. But I'm telling you right now that if the Marine Corps gives me a set of orders and sends me overseas, I'm not going. Or I'm not going to say, no, I can't go because I'm married or my wife doesn't want me to go. I'm going. So you better be prepared for that. And she was okay with that. It, yeah, it was a little difficult. There was times when uh, the separation was grievous, but she knew the Marine Corps came first. Now that I'm a Christian, she knows that God comes first. And then the kids, and then she's like third. <laughs> but hey, you know, we all need to know where we stand. <clears throat> so that's what it is to be serving the Lord with all your heart and your soul where it comes before everything else in your life. In Joshua 24, Joshua challenges the people to make a decision. In verse 14, he says, Now therefore fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's a decision that everybody has to make. You're going to serve somebody. There is no neutral ground. Remember, Luke eleven twenty three 23 says, He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. <clears throat> time's sake we'll skip a couple here uh, Romans 12 and 1 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable to God which is your reasonable service and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God and you know that proving isn't just to you it's to everyone who sees you you prove to the world who your Savior is by how you live and the things that you do. <clears throat> uh, what else might the Christian be mature Christian be called to do? How about warfare and combat? First Timothy six twelve. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called, and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Uh, how much effort is required to be a mature Christian? Hebrews 12. <clears throat> Hebrews 12, just before James 1 through 4. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted the bloodshed, striving against sin. <clears throat> Run and don't give up. And consider those who've gone before you. <clears throat> and remember, there will be chastening of the Lord. Hebrews 12 and 11 says, Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down, and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that the, that which is lame may not be dislocated, but rather healed. 
The mature Christian will overcome the deeds of the body, and we have a promise from God in 1 John 5 and 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. If you do all those things, what does a mature, get, a mature Christian get for all his labors? Uh, John 17, 1, Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hours come, glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you sent. <clears throat> 1 John 2 and 24, Therefore let that abide in you which you've heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. Proverbs 2 and 4, Speaking of wisdom, spiritual growth, if you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. You must have the desire, the inner zeal to know, to please God, and that zeal must result in action. As you go forth this week, <clears throat> I would encourage you to consider the Apostle Paul's statement about what he thought about his life in Galatians 2 and 20. Most of you know it's a memory verse. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And then after you consider that high standard, ask yourself, is it my life's goal to give up my life and to allow people to only see Christ in me? Thanks for your attention. Stan will be dismissed with a word of prayer.